In this video, we'll look at doing problems involving proportional reasoning and we'll, we'll apply it to Coulomb's law equation problems. Now, it's a, an approach that you won't find necessarily in textbooks and it's important because in HSC exams in physics, over the years there are always these sorts of problems and students tend to not do them very well and it's probably because they haven't been taught how to recognize these sorts of problems and how to actually deal with them. So I'll just give you a bit of background and then we'll work through a couple of sample problems. The questions essentially involve changing the value for either the charge or the distance between the charges and perhaps want you to say what the new force would be relative to that change. The thing that we need to keep in mind is that if they've asked about one change, for example, the distance between the charges, consider everything else, unless it's specified, everything else stays the same. Now, in these, in these problems, this component will remain constant because it is a constant. And in previous syllabus, it was represented at, as a constant k. Okay, so in these problems, we just say, okay, well, that can, that part of it is constant. That's not going to change. Okay, we, we can't change what pi is and we can't change what this constant is. So the problems will involve either changing charge or distance between. Okay, or it could be a combination of both. And we need to look at situations in, in this case. So really what we'll be looking at is this relationship. Okay, so we can say essentially that the force between the charges is directly proportional to the Q1, Q2 or inversely proportional to R squared. So that would look like if we broke it down. And so just as an aside and, a, and also a way to think of it, which might be useful, if we graphed these relationships, we could say that force is you know, if it's directly proportional to say Q1, so if, if Q1 is doubled, force will double, for example, if everything else is kept, kept constant, or, you know, that could be Q2, so force versus Q2, or at the same time, force versus Q1 times Q2. Okay, that would also give us a linear relationship. If we look at this, this is known as an inverse square law. If we graph, say, force against the radius, we'll get a parabola, okay? But if we, you know, we could plot force against 1 over R squared, we'll get a linear relationship. But we're not really looking at this in these sort of problems. This one's, in, you know, useful because relating it back to the equation, if if R changes and everything else stays the same, we can see that force is going to reduce par parabolic pattern. And that's useful for when you come back and check your answer or conclusion. It's got to make sense. Okay, so if the new if the if the new radius was a fraction of the old radius and you'd expect that if it's going this way getting smaller then it means the force is increasing and vice versa if the radius gets bigger it means that the force is going to decrease so let's apply it to this problem we've got two charged particles that are a distance of one meter apart so this is the original uh, distance the force between them is f what would you what would the value of the new force be if the distance between the particles was reduced to 0.1 meter okay so let's let's think this through we have a force uh we'll call f so i suppose you could think of forces one uh the distance between the 
particles initially is one meter. Okay, we want to find what the new force will be with that change. So we want to work that one out. Um, and the change we're making is we'll call it r, the new uh, r or the the new distance. And it's 0.1 of a meter, so we can say it's 0.1 of uh, 0.1 of r. So it's a, a tenth of the the original. Okay, so we want to put it in this relationship here. We don't need to relate back to the complete formula. We're only concerned because we can assume everything else remains the same, that the charges themselves are, are, have not changed, and we know that the, you know, the K is a constant, so nothing changes there. So that doesn't have any impact. It's only the only change that's made in this example is the distance. We can rewrite this relationship as so. When we say the new force will be, okay, we've got a relationship of the new radius squared, okay, and then we go, okay, well, the new radius is that. So we can put that in and say, well, it'll be 1 over, um, 1 over 0.1r squared. But all of this is squared, okay? We have to square the whole lot, okay? So if we took that out of these brackets here, we could say that. So 0 0.1 squared gives us gives us what? It gives us 0 0.01. And this R squared, this R is squared as well. So we could say it's, it's like saying, okay, um, 1 over 0 0.01 times 1 over r squared, okay? So 1 divided by 0 0.01 gives us what? It gives us 100. So it'll be 100 times r squared. So this is what the new force will be. So the new force will, will equal um, 100 times the old force. Okay, so whatever the old force is, we don't need to know. We're just talking relative here. So we know it'll be a factor of 100 times because of the increase in the, um, the decrease in the radius. And that makes sense. Okay, because again, if we've looked at this relationship here, we've got this parabolic curve. If we're going from one down to you know like a, a fraction of that we're going to get an, an increase in um you know in the 4c so that's that first example let's do another one okay this one's it's the same but it's just good practice uh so this time we've got a new distance of 0.5 instead of one meter so again the thinking was we'll say that the original force was a factor of one the original distance was one meter. What are we? What is the new force now? We want to know. And the distance, the new distance is 0.5 of. So it's half of the original. Half of the original. Okay, whatever the original was. Okay, so I mean, I'm just saying. Um, here's another another way to think of these problems. They might not even tell you what the original, you know, distance was. They might just say the distance was reduced by, you know, to a factor of one tenth of the original. That's the same sort of thinking. In this case, they might just say the radius was reduced to half of the original radius. So this is why this thinking, I think, works. Um, or in the next problem, we'll, we'll look at maybe doubling the radius, okay? So, you know, in that case, the new radius would be two times the original, okay? Does that help in that terms of thinking about why we're taking this approach? Okay, so again, we're only concerned with this relationship. So we want to know what the new force is. So we substitute in um, the new radius, which is now 0.5R. We need to square both of these. 
I'll put it here. So we end up with 1 over 0.5 times 0.5 is 0 0.25. Okay, times the 1 over r squared. So this is what our factor is going to be. So 1 divided by 0.25 tells us that it's 4 times that. So therefore the force, the new force will be a factor of 4 times the original force. Okay, so I've reworded the question based on what I was talking about in the previous um, slide. Uh, what will what will the new force be if the distance between the charges is doubled? Okay, so we've now got a new distance of two times the original uh, distance, and and I've mentioned and all other factors remain constant, so we've got to keep that in mind. Okay, so what will be the new force in this case? I'm just going to you know we should be able to start cutting back our thinking at the minute. So, all right, so if we say, okay, the new force will be 1 over 2R squared. Okay, expand that out. We get, so 2 squared is 4, so 1 over 4 times 1 over R squared. So looking at this, that means our force will be 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.25 of the original force, so a quarter of the original force. And again, thinking back to our graph, so if you've, so if you've doubled it, gone here from, say, here to here, well, it's not to scale, but you know the force is going to be reduced. Okay, it's going to be reduced to a quarter of the original force. Okay, sample problem four starts off the same as if the original um, problem. So we've got charged particles one meter apart. The force between is F. What would be the value of the new force if the value of one of the charges is halved? Okay, so in this problem, we will be concerned with the relationship between, let's just say, Q1. So the re relationship between force and one of the charges is proportional. So if Q1 doubles, then the force will double. If Q1 is halved, then you expect that uh, the force would halve, would be halved. But okay, we can think that out. That's pretty straightforward. But we want to be able to show that, show our reasoning for how we get to that. Okay, so that's important communication in physics. So we can call it, um, we'll call it Q1 new, and we'll say it is half. It is half. So it's half of the original Q1. That means we go, the new force will be directly proportional to the new charge, and which is half of the original charge. Okay, so it's this factor here that we need. So the new force will be half of the original force. That's pretty straightforward, I think. So I'll give you some practice problems to work through and see how you go.